gonna make a probably just a quick announcement here about the channel status here. I'm using an iPad, so I'm not sure where to look. Um, so as you may or may not know, we did not reach 6,000 subs, and I did not get 10 new channel members. So that means um, the plan was to move forward with only members-only content from this point forward for the foreseeable future. I'm still with the volition of doing that. As you may, as you can see, this is a live stream for the public. I do feel that I owe one more comments video because of the massive amount of comments I've gotten over the last couple weeks here at the end of 2023. So I'm putting that together as we speak. But that will probably be the last public video on this channel. So if you want to see new content, if you want to see fresh content having to do a correct sentence structure, then I recommend you hitting the join button and joining at a tier two level. And then you will get new content every month. But as far as the public side, not going to happen. At least at this point in time. Any hope for folks that have been here a while but can't afford a consistent membership? Well, of course, Aaron. Um, there's 900 videos here for you to study. If you want to. There's content that's already here. The thousands of hours I've already invested. That's always going to be here. I'm not going to delete it. But as far as new content, that would be for the members. The Tier 2 members. What you put in is what you get out. trying to remember, Aaron, have we done workshops together? Hold on a minute. Let, let, I'll be right back. Aaron, if you're still here, I do have on file from October 25th of 2021 um, that we banked a contract for a specific type of workshop that you never followed up on. So you still have that there. And actually, because of all the time that's passed, I would highly recommend not going forward with that particular general performance workshop that we talked about, and that you actually take a couple grammar classes if you're gonna get back into it. Because if you've been on hiatus, you know, you, you correct sentence structure is like walking up a down escalator. If you're doing anything besides putting one foot in front of the other, you're going backwards. So I highly recommend that for you. If you wanna get back into it, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'll set up a consultation and we'll talk about it. Cause, uh, you do have credit on my books, so to speak. So, anytime you're ready, I'm here. So, keep everybody keep your eyes out for that um, comments video. It's it's a crazy one. It's a crazy one. We got some. Pretty volatile comments in there from disgruntled uh, former students. <laughs> it's all there, warts and all. I mean, it'll be it. The last one is a banger. Let's put it that way. The last one is a banger. I think it. it tallied up to be about 50 minutes long, which I'm going to edit that down. But I'm definitely going to miss doing those comments videos. Maybe I'll still do them for the members. Um, they'll enjoy that.
again, you know, when I'm speaking to the members, I have to be a lot less careful than I, than I would normally have to be in public with what I say. So there's that. I go a lot more into psychology and personal stories in the members section, <clears throat> tier two members section. So now's your opportunity, folks. This is probably the last live stream I'm doing, so if you have questions, pop them in the comments. Feel free to step forward. If we got any lurkers or trolls out there, step up. Come on up here. Don't be scared, homie. That's like the poll that I posted uh, the other day where one of the choices was delete your channel. Good riddance. I put that on there purposely because I knew that there would be people out there that would get massive amounts of joy, of joy in clicking that particular choice. It's always the trolls that stay anonymous. They're afraid to really step up and be called to the carpet. So I figured I'd give them an opportunity for happiness. <laughs> Any questions out there? This is probably your final opportunity to catch me on a live stream in the public. I'll definitely be doing live streams for members, uh, the tier two members, but not public. I've been doing public live streams for years now. It's just, you know, the, the, the amount of energy that I'm putting into it, I'm not getting out of it. Not from participation, not from donations, super chats, nothing. So that's the whole reason. I thought that it would basically balance it out, rule one, rule equal, where, you know, I'm putting time and energy into it to try and teach people that they would show up to be taught. But that hasn't been the case for whatever reason. So that's why I remain doing the workshops in the confidential, um, doing the classes and things like that, but not on YouTube. YouTube just isn't worth it. <clears throat> there just isn't enough interest or participation from people in the comments field. There just isn't. It is what it is. It goes with like what I said, you know, I mean, not everybody wants to learn this. Only the 1% of the 1%, the elite, are going to learn this. And the rest are just going to be followers. They're going to be lurkers. They're going to probably gravitate to people like Mark Lowercase K. Kishon or Russell J. Gould or whomever and prefer that type of, you know, uh, atmosphere where you got someone who's let's get it done, blah, 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 but no one ever tells you how to do it. You never learn the grammar. You just put your faith in this figure that's up front. And then when it comes down to brass tacks and you have to stand on your own two feet and you think Russell's going to be behind you to save you, uh-uh, uh-uh. You're going to fall backwards and crack the back of your head open is what's going to happen there. That's why I try and teach people to stand on their own two feet so they don't have to worry about someone being, you know, a leader. They can be their own leader. But that's too scary for a lot of people. That's just too scary. All right. I am going to wait a few minutes here and come back and check the chat to see if there are any questions. And if there are no questions, I'm going to cut it and say thank you very much everyone for everything so i'll be right back so we do have one question not necessarily about grammar mechanics but about a live life claim and the question comes from dennis thompson and they say jason with live life claim i would need two or three witnesses and they would have to get live life claims as well so for the live life claim, the, um, the answer is that the most important thing with the live life claim is that you, as a live life claimant, have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Otherwise, it's going to be worthless to you. 
there's going to be no point in having it if you don't know the grammar yourself. Number one. Number two, your name has to be, your correct name, punctuated name, has to be the only name in the copyright copy claim section in order for you to take authority over that document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue. Now, if you don't have closure on the grammar and you have a live life claim, then you must at least have access to someone who does have closure on the grammar and can take authority over your documents if you're ever in a situation where you need to use correct sentence structure. So either you have to be authority or someone else would have to know the grammar. You see what I'm saying? That's the most important thing. Otherwise, it's useless to have it. It's like you, you can give your child a live life claim, but it's useless to them unless you know the grammar. Because they don't know the grammar, how can they represent themselves? You see what I'm saying? That's the most important thing. Okay, so all that aside, a live life claim, in order for it to be correct within the mechanics that David Wood Miller taught, you need at least three live life claim witnesses. Three live life claim witnesses. Okay? At least. You can have more than that, but you cannot have less than three. So, theoretically speaking, my live life claim could have me as a witness, a live life claim witness, my wife as a live life claim witness, and my adult son as a live life claim witness. Those three living witnesses. I know an individual out there who has uh, Colin David Ife and Wayne Colin Miller as a witness on their live life claim. Now, that live life claim is no longer valid because David Wynn Miller is no longer vertical. He's no longer in this domain. So your live life claim witnesses must be live life claimants. And by the word live life claimant means they're living. They cannot be deceased. So I hope that answers your question. Well, you're welcome, April. I appreciate your membership and your viewership. Would you need to make a new claim with a new living witness in that case? Well, Aaron, let's think this through logically, all right? What do you think? What do you think? If, you, if a live life claim is no longer valid because one of the witnesses, one or more of the witnesses has passed on, what do you, what do you think would have to happen? Logically thinking, just think it through. Because that's what a lot of this is. It, it's like, I, I realize over the past few years that logic and reason has basically been erased from the public's mind. So that's why I suggest a study of the trivium method. Grammar, logic, and rhetoric. The logic part of it is fantastic. It can help you think through things like this. I think definitely, yes, just haven't heard of this scenario before. Gotcha. All right. Well, you are a young fella, so you don't probably don't have too many people dying off around you. Myself, I can count on more fingers and toes than mine, and everyone watching this um, all their fingers and toes as well, of all the friends and acquaintances that I've had that have passed away over my lifetime. So death is very much a reality for me. All have to be over 18 or 21 when I'm in Australia. That's up to you, Dennis Thompson. That is completely up to you. If you think that, uh, your child has the capacity to navigate 
as an adult when they're 16 years old, well, then that's your assessment of the situation. That's up to you. If you don't think that they're mature enough to navigate on their own at 30 years old, that's up to you. <laughs> but yes, the legal system, um, for the most part, the legal system, the fiction system, recognizes 18 as the time when uh, someone can be a legal adult, which has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. As I said, if you think your child is an adult at 16, that's fine. If you think they're perfectly capable of providing for themselves, um, navigating without help through the world at 16 years old, well, then they can be an adult. But that's your judgment. Hello, how we the Spanish speakers can deal. Deal what? Gonna have to be a little bit more specific. And that, that, that's a perfect example of why and how the legal system is so screwed up. Because you got, in the, in the past tense United States, you got 18 year olds that can carry automatic weapons and go off into foreign countries and kill people on the government dime, but yet they can't drink alcohol until they're 21. What kind of idiocy is that? That's a rhetorical question, by the way. They're old enough to kill, just not old enough to kill themselves with alcohol. Hello, how we the Spanish speakers can deal in English or we have to translate? Well, as far as I know, as far as I can tell, um, you would have to learn correct sentence structure using plain, simple English, and then you yourself would translate it into Spanish, or you would have to find a Spanish-speaking individual who already knows correct sentence structure and can teach it to you using Spanish. As of yet, that does not exist as far as I know. Although we are making great strides to make that happen, we are very close to that. I am in contact with an individual overseas who is very diligently working on such a translation, but we're not quite there yet. Probably maybe midway through the year or maybe towards the end of the year, we might have something to offer in that, in that aspect, but right now, you have to learn it in plain English and then translate it yourself. Any other questions? If you're interested in the fourth way from G.I. Gurdjieff, this is the book to start with. This has pretty much everything you need in it. Have you been tested from others over a live life claim? What do you mean by tested? You mean like have I been given a pop quiz or something? You're welcome, Aaron. Thank you. Shaka. I don't know what you mean by that. Tested. Over a live life claim. Like, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, how would one be tested by that? In order to give a test, someone has to have knowledge. Most police officers and judges have no knowledge of what a live life claim is. So how could they ever be in a position to give a test about it? That makes absolutely no sense there, Dennis. And I'm not making fun of you, man. I'm just thinking of things from, I'm in my correct sentence structure mode. I'm thinking about things very logically. And there is logically no, I could give you a test for your live life claim. I could, because I have closure on the grammar. I could definitely give you a quiz on it right now. 
all the elements you need for it. Do you know what it is you're talking about? Blah, blah, blah. But a police officer, they can't give a test on that. They don't know shit about a live life quit. That's why you have to know correct sentence structure in order to teach them. That's why you have to know it to be able to, you have to know it so well that you can teach someone else this stuff. So why does I need to know? Well, I don't know. Why do you need to know? I'm not telling you you need to know this. I would never tell someone what they need to do. It's up to you if you want to learn it. But I'm not telling you you need to. Maybe you don't need to. So I hope you're not getting the wrong impression here. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not telling you you need this. This is for people that already want it. That have already made their minds up. They don't need to be convinced of anything. They don't need to be sold on anything. This is something that's already in them that they already want. That they already know. That they want to learn this. For their own reasons. If you're looking for me to tell you why you need to do something, you're looking in the wrong place, bud. You have to figure that out for yourself. There's lots of other people out there that are more than happy to tell you what you need to do or what you should be doing, but I'm not one of them. I'm definitely not one of them. I think I, I get what you're saying unless you totally mistyped it. Um, in which case, you know, then I guess strike that from the record, what I just said. Actually, don't strike it from the record. I stand by that. I'm not here to tell people what they should or shouldn't do or what they need to do. That's up to them. I actually think that's one of the biggest problems on earth today is that people just do that. Like, like when I mentioned last month that I was ill. There was no shortage of people that automatically started sending health remedies and advice and things like that. I didn't ask for advice. I didn't ask for any of that. I just said, I'm ill. And that was it. And I went on to something else. When someone tells someone what they need to do or what they should do, without being asked, that is a trespass. That's fiction mentality. So again, if you're here looking for me to give you a reason to do this, then you're probably looking in the wrong place because you have to find that reason within yourself. And, uh, you know, that's a very unpopular thing because most people want, even though they say they don't, most people want to be told what to do. They want to be given sort of a, a guiding individual, you know what I mean? They, they want to be led. Correct sentence structure, by my experience, is definitely not for those type of people. Unless you want to go over to the Russell J. Gould part of it, where that's a very authoritarian construct, very militaristic, chain of command, uh, knowledge is hidden and guarded and put behind locked doors and you have to keep paying money and just have faith that Russell's going to make it all work out just fine because he's the chief and he's going to make everything all right, which never happens. What's going to come first, folks? Is Jesus going to come back or is Russell going to make the world right again? <laughs> Which is going to come first? My money's on Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I walk into court. Would a judge test my volition document? Dennis, if you don't have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, anything I say to you probably isn't going to make much sense. So you're asking questions that would come after you learn the grammar. All right, I can tell you 
that if you walk into a court, a foreign vessel in dry dock using correct sentence structure, no, they're not going to recognize it. That's why you have to know it well enough to teach it to them. You have to know it well enough to hold your position, to commandeer the well of the court. You have to know this stuff in order to do that, but you don't. So what I'm talking to you is this theory. And I still think you're trying to get me to convince you of something. And I'm not really going to go down that road. I have never gone down that road in the, since 2018. You know, I, I'm, I'm about the grammar. If you're not here to learn the grammar, then I'm not going to teach you courtroom mechanics. The grammar comes first. The most important thing is the grammar. Learn the grammar. Once you get a rudimentary grasp on the grammar, I guarantee you that these judge mechanics and courtroom mechanics will then suddenly fall into place. And all that will be necessary is for you to ask me a couple questions and, uh, and I'll be able to piece them together very neatly for you. But the grammar comes first. So again, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you're ready for workshops, email me. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. We can look each other eye to eye, so to speak. You can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And it'll be just like this. Only I'll be able to see you too. And we'll go from there. But it's up to you to take that first step. I'm not here to convince you or make you do anything. You don't have to have a life life claim to learn grammar. But you have to know the grammar to use the live life claim. And live life claim witnesses are a very simple thing if you really think about it logically. Whether you have to mail it to some other location to get a witness or not. But again, these mechanics are explained in my live life claim mini class. You just have to go look at that video and I explain all that in there. <clears throat> it takes a certain amount of effort on your part there's no doubt about it so you don't have to have a life life claim to learn correct sentence structure just like you don't have to have a birth certificate to learn to speak plain English I mean come on Although no one has sent any this time, I do appreciate all those individuals out there like Andrew and Rosvon, Daryl Bennett, all the people that sent me super chats. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. It tells me that you do value what I do here and what I have done over the past few years. I very much appreciate also all the members that take their hard-earned money and they're willing to invest a little bit of it every month to me. I appreciate that as well. And it went into every bit of these 900 or so videos. And to the rest of you out there who have never contributed or anything like that, I also appreciate you. And um, But again, as I've said, the ones that invest stuff get stuff back. The ones that don't seem to always be spinning their wheels. There are some folks that have been here for a year or two still asking the same questions because they've never taken that step. What you put in is what you get out. It's just logic. I have done many, many hours. Just don't know grammar writing, but can read it a little. Well, it took me 2,000 hours of consistent study before I was able to even use this stuff. 2,000 hours. And that was back in 2017. I'm up over 30,000 hours of performance now. Somewhere around there. So, I don't know what you mean by many hours, but it takes thousands and thousands of hours, for sure, of consistent 
daily study. Hola, Jason. Happy New Year. Thanks for all you gifts on this channel. I am learning the grammar and also translating the Spanish. It's quite a lot of work. Stefan. Hmm. Well, you're not the only one, Stefan. You're definitely not the only one because I'm actually working with a student of mine and helping. Well, they're doing most of the work because they speak Spanish. But I'm sort of, I sort of jumped in on it and we did a little, we had a little meeting and we were able to, to do correct sentence structure in Spanish fairly easily and simply. So he's working out all the bugs. He's doing all the work and he's, as far as I know, is with the volition of bringing it to the public once we both can certify that the translation actually works and is correct. But hey, I congratulate you on your translating. I just have a question though, you know, you I don't think I've ever done a class with you. Do you have closure on correct sentence structure in English? Because if you don't, I'm not sure how you can translate it. You might want to be careful with that, because if you don't have closure on the grammar, then you may be translating some inaccuracies into Spanish. See, that's the thing, that's where I come in with a student of mine that speaks Spanish. Like, they'll run a sentence by me in Spanish, and then I'll ask them, because I'm, I'm very good at syntax in Latin, or Latin-based languages, I can say, well, what's this particle of negation, and blah, 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 but they're actually pretty sharp on that, too. They're very sharp on that, so... I wouldn't even say I'm a collaborator. This guy is so sharp with it. Um, it's going to be phenomenal when it comes up. So Stephen, if you don't have, or Stefan, if you don't have closure on the grammar, I would caution you against doing any translations other than just for fun. Because there could be some, there probably are some inaccuracies in there, as I'm sure you know, if you're with the humility. We'll do face-to-face -face in a couple of weeks. Once I get work again, we'll email you. Thank you, Jason. Nothing you said hurts me. Where do I find your definition of... What are you asking me, Dennis? What, what definition? First of all, I don't... In correct sentence structure, there is no definition because a definition, DE means no, finite means finite and an ION means contract so a definition is a no finite contract that's why in a dictionary in a plain English dictionary you will have multiple meanings for one word because there's no closure there's no finite contract for the word in correct sentence structure is one word one meaning one and one is one so therefore I wouldn't I don't participate with definitions I participate with finite means so if you could um Tell me the word you're looking for, and I will do the best I can to give you closure and correct sentence structure on what that word means in my dictionary, because that's where you would find it. You and I don't have a contract, so therefore you don't have access to my dictionary. The only time you would have access to any of the finite means from my dictionary is if we had a contract, a written contract in correct sentence structure, which we don't. So that's why you wouldn't be able to find that, unless I would just give it to you. How to meme your own dictionary? What do you mean by meme my own dictionary? I would never meme my dictionary. What? Oh, make, sorry. How do you make your own dictionary? Well, one way to start to find out how to do that is to type into Google lexicography or how to be a lexicographer. So if you type that into Google, Google will tell you how you can create your own dictionary, how lexicographer works, because I'm a lexicographer. I've created my own dictionary. So once you've learned those principles, those techniques, then you can translate those over to correct sentence structure. But first you have to know the grammar. And I'm guessing that you don't. 
So my recommendation to you as master of this vessel is learn the grammar and then worry about the dictionary later. Because, I mean, you can have a dictionary of plain English, but if you don't know how to speak English, what the hell good is it going to do you? First, you have to learn how to communicate. Then you can put out your dictionary. If you're serious about learning, if you're... 100% serious about that? Email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. But please include your full correct name in your email and I'll get back to you and I'll set up a 10 to 50 minute video consultation and we can find out how serious you are. I gotta say this, you know, since this is probably the last live video I'm gonna do in the public, that over the years, I have had countless people, countless people tell me, Jason, I'm going to contact you next week. Jason, I'm going to contact you tomorrow. Jason, I'm going to contact you next month. And uh, get rolling on this. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the people that say they're going to do that never do. For whatever reason, they just never do. So keep that in mind before you decide to open your mouth. Realize that the minute you open your mouth, it's probably jinxed. <laughs> and I, I'm just going by my years and years and years of experience of, of communicating with people from all over the earth. People that say they're going to contact me usually never do. But it's all good because the people that are meant to learn this will learn it. They'll be, put, they'll be in a position, they'll put themselves in a position to learn. They will. And if they are in that position and they are with the position of peace and neutrality, with the balance of the honor and the grace, the maintenance of the rule, one rule equal, and also the cultivation of humility, I'll be there to help them. But if you come to me and you try and put terms and conditions on me, then we aren't going to contract because that's not how this works. It has to work the way it works in order for it to be successful. That's my experience. I don't know how many years of experience you have out there, viewers, of teaching correct sentence structure to other people, but I have literally thousands and thousands of hours. And so I've found a formula that works for me, and it is the most successful formula that I've seen anywhere. It isn't a cookie-cutter formula. It's tailored to you, the student which you may be different than that person or that person or that person. Um, it's individual, individualized. I don't care what others do or say. I say and really do. Well, Dennis, uh, I have to disagree with that type of mentality because I do care what others do or say. I do have empathy. All right. However, I make my own choices based upon all the, you know, the rule one, rule equal judge mechanics. I take the whole story into consideration, not just my own personal feelings. Because if someone walks around saying, I don't care what other people do or say, well, then that's callous. Because now you're, you know, the truth can hurt people and the truth can be used as a weapon to hurt people. And people that do that are bullies. If you're using the truth to hurt somebody on purpose, you're the bully. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't, I'm very careful with what I say about stuff like that. I would never say, I mean, I get the sentiment. You don't care what other people do, you know, cool. But for me, on a literal sense, I do care. I do care. And I'm, I'm, I try to be as observant as possible to see the demeanor of the people around me. And then when I assess that, then I choose how to behave. Then I choose whether to be firm or whether to be more laid back, peaceful, aggressive. I base all of that on what people are doing and saying around me because I don't want to ever maliciously hurt someone using the truth because that's just 
That's just bullshit bully behavior. All right. Dennis, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you stepping up. I look forward to talking to you if you actually do follow through and email me. I look forward to it. I'll set up the consultation. Uh, anyone else out there, same thing. Contact me at the email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Again, this is probably the last live stream I'm doing, so I appreciate y'all for being here. If you want to see more new content, join up at the Tier 2 membership, Loyalists and Contributors. In the immortal words of the supergroup, ABBA, Happy New Year. Hmm, you're getting me wrong. You said, I don't care what others do or say. How many, how many ways can you take that, Dennis? You don't care what others do or say. You don't care. I'm an other, so you don't care what I do or say. You see what I'm saying? That's why I'm very careful with what I say. But again, appreciate you, man. Look forward to hearing from you. Everybody, all the members. Members, I will see you soon. The public... Hasta la vista. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.